Today on Two Crazy Ketos, we're gonna make keto beef jerky. Two ways. We'll show you where's the beef right, right after, after this. this. Hey, what's up family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, Two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews, we do recipe videos, we talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. That's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Yeah. So we love beef jerky. But they can be sweet and pricey. Yes, recently I was in Whole Foods and I was looking for some beef jerky, uh, but the problem is a lot of the store-bought beef jerkies are loaded with sugar. Yes. Then when you start looking at some of the regular beef jerkies, like the better ones, not like the Slim Jim kind of stuff, they're expensive. I mean, they had one in Whole Foods, like in the butcher section, $36 a pound for fresh beef jerky. Nobody got money for that. Well, the bottom line is it's expensive because you're taking good beef, which can be 10, 15, 20, 25 dollars a pound, and then you're dehydrating it. So, you know, you're losing almost like 70% of the weight. So to get a pound of beef jerky, you need like three to four pounds of actual beef. So that's why it's so expensive. I've thought about like how much money have we spent on beef jerky over the years? Because as a gamer family, beef jerky was something that has always been a part of our lives. Right, and the bottom line is beef jerky is great on keto. It is a little bit higher in protein, but if you're looking for a snack, something that's not gonna throw you off the rails both calorically as well as with carbohydrates, homemade fresh beef jerky is definitely the way to go. You can eat a couple of pieces, only have a few calories, and it's gonna take you a little bit longer to eat it because it's so chewy. So do you have to use filet mignon? No, we're gonna do today, we're gonna make beef jerky two different ways. We're gonna make it with beef, traditional way, the way you're used to having it, where you get a piece like this and you can kind of chew on it. We're also going to make it with ground beef because ground beef is cheaper and it's easier to find. So you ready? I'm ready. Okay, now here's the thing. We're going to use a dehydrator to make this. Dehydrator is definitely going to give you some of the best jerky because it can go at a very low temperature and you can let it go for a long time. Plus it's gonna be the cheapest to run when you're trying to you know, dry this beef jerky out. If you don't have a dehydrator, you can still do this. You're gonna put it in your oven at the lowest possible temperature. You wanna get down to, if you can, 160 degrees, but a lot of ovens do only go to 170. But you wanna get down at 150 to 160 degrees on your oven. You can also do it on your smoker. You're just gonna, once again, have to pay attention to the, the temperatures in that smoker. Now we got an Excalibur yes. one, and I have to say, it has a very relaxing sound. Right. I actually like it as background noise when I'm relaxing because it's just a nice little white noise hum. I will put a link for the one that we got down below. We did get a little bit bigger one because we plan on making a lot of beef jerky. I also do like some dehydrated vegetables. We used to buy all the time the dehydrated broccoli and stuff at Trader Joe's, but that stuff was expensive. Yeah. So it's just nice kind of making some of our own snacks and eliminating the processing part from the store. Exactly. But this is about beef jerky, so let's get into the beef jerky. First way we're gonna make it is with traditional beef. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with some gloves. Man. So you need to, this is a precious commodity right now. I was now, gonna so. say. Fortunately, I have them. I don't think I could get them if uh, I needed to order them again. So we'll just put these on, just because we are gonna be working with meat. It also, aside from working with meat, it just makes it easier for the cleanup as you're going along. It does. Okay, so you wanna use very lean meat, okay? Because the fattier meats don't dehydrate really well. Okay. And plus the fats can go rancid. So you wanna use as lean as possible. Find something like a top round or something like that. Now, unfortunately, right now, we're in the middle of the whole virus scare and everything, so it's a little bit harder to find some of that stuff. And the best place we used to get our meats from did close down. Yes. Uh, so I was actually at Whole Foods and I, they had this beef top sirloin on sale. So that's what I picked up. It's a little bit fattier than I would normally use, uh, but that's okay. We're still gonna use it. 
Now to save some time, I actually have kind of pr done some prep work. Okay. So what I've got here is I got my cutting board right here and I've just taken two pieces. I have about a pound and I've uh, malleted them thin. The thinner the better because it won't take as long to dry if you get it nice and thin. But you don't want it to the point where you can start pulling it apart with your fingers right. either. Okay, so we've got this piece here and then we've got this nice big piece here. Now you can see in here, uh, you're not gonna really be able to see in the camera, but there is some fat in there. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut that fat out. And uh, what I do is I throw it to the dog and she gets some nice raw beef she to go. She loves when we make beef jerky. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our knife and what you wanna do, this is, we're teaching you at the same time. Yes. Um, you wanna find the grain of the meat. Now with this particular piece, the grain is kind of going in different directions. Well, what you wanna do is cut against the grain. Oh, okay. okay. Because now you can do it either way. Here's the difference. If you cut with the grain, it's going to be chewier. Oh, okay. If you cut against the grain, it'll kind of come apart a little bit more as you're eating it. So it just depends on what you like. So we're just going to cut off like some little slivers, kind of about like that. Okay. okay. So now we've got our beef cut up. We're gonna put that off to the side and we're going to make our marinade. Yum. Now that is one of the differences when we're making it this way, you're gonna marinate it. Now if you have a vacuum sealer, like we have the Frost Saver, this is one of their marinating bowls. You can put it in there, set it to marinate and about 30 minutes later, you're ready to go. Okay. If you don't have that, you're gonna to wanna to put it in the refrigerator for a few hours and let it soak up all these delicious juices. Here's what you're gonna need. Now you're gonna need these same ingredients for both ways. We're gonna use some Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire. We're going to use some apple cider vinegar. And let's put it over here since we do have two cameras running. <laughs> we have some coconut aminos. Which tastes like soy sauce. It, it's basically an alternative to soy sauce, but we're not dealing with all the soy, which means we're not dealing with all the estrogens. It is more expensive. It does taste a lot better. Yeah. Uh, I get it usually in Whole Foods, several different brands. The Bragg's honestly seems to be the cheapest out of all the ones I've found. And not I think it brag actually tastes, it. <laughs> I do think it tastes a lot better. And then we need some garlic, either granulated garlic or garlic powder, your choice. We need some Redmond Real Salt or any kind of salt. Hey, look at my shirt. Almost forgot this one. We need some black pepper. I like to use fresh ground black pepper. We need some stevia. You can use steep. monk fruit, but I like stevia, especially in this. What we're going through for is a sweet and spicy jerky, and it's not so spicy good. where nobody will eat it. It right. does have a nice sweet taste to it. So to get the spiciness, we're gonna use some red pepper flakes. Now, if you don't have this, you can use some just cayenne pepper, but I like the flakes because I like it when you take that bite and you get that little flake. Me too. Okay, so we're gonna put this off to the side. I've got everything pre-measured out for us. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is we're going to use a third of a cup of coconut aminos. Now again, this is for using in the steak kind, not ground beef. So you wanna go ahead and pour that in there? Yes. Three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. There will be a link down below for the recipe on our website to make both ways. Then we've got about a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire. Uh, we've got a teaspoon of stevia. You can go, depending on how sweet you want, a half a teaspoon, two is teaspoons. So like anywhere between 30 to 60 drops. I go with a teaspoon. I don't wanna miss any. Then we've got our spices. Garlic, salt, and black pepper. One teaspoon of each one. Oh my goodness, that smells so good. And then finally, we have our crushed red pepper. Um, I'm going with a teaspoon. You wanna go half a teaspoon or a teaspoon, depending on how spicy you want it. Okay, and we're gonna just put that. You can go ahead and give that a little mix. Oh, it smells so good. I wish there was smell-o-vision. And then from there, we're just gonna take our beef. You can also do this with chicken. Kind of put it in there, give it a good stir. You're gonna see it's not gonna coat, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna marinate it and it will soak up all those flavors. Now again, 
I have this uh, nice marinating dish. I will leave a link on, I got it on Amazon actually. But what's really nice is you just take the little thing from your vacuum sealer, you put the hose in here. And with the version that we have, it'll like suck the air out, let it go. Then you'll hear the machine kick back on about 10 minutes later and it'll do that two or three times. And when you're done, like there's almost no liquid left. It just pulls all that liquid up into the bin. Yeah. Okay, so to save some time, we actually have some that we've been marinating. It's all ready to go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just take our tray and we're just going to lay it out. Now you don't wanna crowd it. You wanna make sure there's a little bit of space in between each piece. Like they're laying out by the pool on a sunny day. <clears throat> and again, better off with going with two racks. And again, if you don't have a dehydrator on a smoker in the oven. If you're gonna do it in the oven, I would suggest laying it out on a cookie rack, on a, uh, like a cooling rack, uh -huh. so that it's elevated a little bit. If you don't have that, what you'll have to do is go in and flip it at some point. This is what we have here. This one was a little bit less than a pound, but again, we wanted to just be able to make this as quick as possible. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll stick this in the dehydrator at uh, 155 to 160 degrees. Nice and low. For about four to five hours. Now, if your dehydrator only goes to 155 degrees, don't worry about it. The temperature of the dehydrator should reach that 160 mark and you definitely want to have it there because that's what's going to help kill off the bacteria for the preservation of the meat. Because we're not using any nitrates. We're not using any nitrates in this. Now, it is shelf stable for a little while, but I would say for a few days, unless you're going to vacuum seal it, so best bet is what we do is store it in the refrigerator. That's going to extend it. It'll be good in your refrigerator for a few weeks. If it lasts that long. If it lasts that long. Okay, now we're gonna make the ground beef version. Here's the difference. So you guys can look, I'll show you in this camera over here. This is the, the regular version, just using like the top sirloin. You can see how this is like traditional beef jerky. Yeah. See how you can, it's like stringy, you pull it apart. What you're used to. Wait, now the ground beef version is kind of like when you get those uh, the meat snacks from like Epic, Epic, like the Epic bars. So this is literally just pressed ground beef. I seriously love this stuff. Now it's not quite as chewy, but it's definitely very flavorful. Mmm. And this preserves really, really, really well. Now, before we get into making this, as we eat our beef jerky, mm. we have a special tool for this. Thing looks scary. This is called the jerky gun. Are you going to exterminate pests with this? Oh, <laughs> okay. walk right into that. So this is a jerky gun. You can get these on Amazon. I'll leave a link down below. If you don't have this, don't worry about it. You could make this without it. All you're going to do at this point, if you don't have it, is kind of lay everything out on a piece of parchment paper and roll it thin. The jerky gun just makes it nice and easy because not only can you do this, it also comes with attachments so you could make basically like Slim Jim sticks or something like that. So you can have long tubes instead of flat pieces. It's so cool. I just like the flat pieces. Okay, you ready? Yeah. First thing we're gonna need is a bowl. Then we're gonna use a pound of ground beef. And again, as lean as possible. We're using the 100% grass-fed ground beef. Uh, this is actually from the United States, so we're really happy about that. And this is 85% lean. If you can find 90% or even 93%, that would be better. Even better. So what we wanna do is just put this into our bowl. We washed our gloves. Now, yeah, instead of wasting our gloves, since we are at that Can't time right, right now, now, we're just going to put, we just washed them. And we're just gonna put the ground beef in here. And then I'm gonna go rinse my hand off again real quick. Okay, now we're gonna have the same ingredients in this as we have in the other one, mm -hmm. but we're gonna use different ratios because you don't want to use too much liquid since you have the ground beef. Plus, on the other one, when you're done marinating, you're gonna have some liquid left over. This uh, won't have anything left over. So you're up. only gonna put in here what you need to actually give the flavor. Right. So I have everything, again, already pre-measured out. We're gonna start off with our coconut aminos. For that. And that's one and a half tablespoons of coconut aminos. And it's a pound of ground beef. Yep. Now I've also added right into there the Worcestershire sauce because for this, just like a splash or so, maybe like a half a teaspoon, but that's not going to measure out and then pour in well. So just a nice splash of uh, Worcestershire yes. sauce. Then we're going to go apple cider vinegar, half a tablespoon. I'm not sure, did I say tablespoon or teaspoon of the coconut aminos? It's a tablespoon, one and a half tablespoons of coconut aminos. 
Then we've got our stevia, same amount, half a teaspoon to a teaspoon. Spices, teaspoon of pepper, teaspoon of salt, teaspoon of garlic. Triple threat. <laughs> and then finally, once again, we've got our red pepper, red pepper flakes. Then just use your hands. Ooh, I don't want to miss any. Give it all a mix. Now you do want to make sure you get all the spices really mixed in well, but don't overwork the meat too much. So this is going to be our jerky ammunition. Yes, for the jerky gun. We're going to load ammunition. the gun. You good? Yeah. Okay, so what we're going to do, we can make this a little bit easier. What you're going to do is you're going to take apart your jerky gun. It's like a pipe. And what you'll have to do is actually pull this trigger back. It's kind of like a caulking gun. Oh. Now, it does come with a stuffer and a piece to put on. Um, I don't know what I did. It, it comes with this piece to actually put it on to load it better. However, that's just another thing to clean. Right. So what we're going to do is just kind of roll it into small pieces and then drop it down in there. This way it fits Oop, right in the tube. One bullet. So now we've got everything put together. A little bit coming out on the bottom. We're going to just kind of turn it. Now we're going to put the bowl to the side. We're going to grab another tray. And now here's the fun part. Just like a caulking gun, we're just going to kind of start on one end. Now you can do a long strip. Huh. Or what you're gonna, what I like to do is just do little pieces. Otherwise, you're gonna have to come back and cut it later, and just kind of squeeze it, and then I kind of break it off like that. Oh my goodness! And just keep going until you're out of beef jerky. Looks like meaty fruit roll-ups. <laughs> The sound is amazing. It's like. <laughs> and again, you can do this with a tube too. It does come with the tube attachments. At least the one that we ordered came with, came with the tube attachments. I like this flat one though. And this is a really good recipe for people who have any trouble with their teeth. Yes, this one isn't quite as chewy as some of the other beef jerkies. I can remember my grandfather really loving beef jerky, but Okay, we'll like, put that to the side. We'll have to do another tray. With dentures, he really struggled with it. Doesn't have to be perfect. I actually like it where not all my pieces of beef jerky are the same size. I like to look into the bowl and see which one is the biggest and take that one. Now, if you really want it to be good, you could sit here with a knife and cut it off as it comes through. Please. It didn't have to be pretty. This isn't a cake. Okay, now what's gonna happen is we're gonna be at the end. That's gonna be the last, this will probably be the last one, but there is still some jerky left in the gun. Okay, so we've got that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this apart. You grab the bowl. Put that off to the side. Take off the tip. Oh, it just fell and off. And you can get whatever's left in there because the plunger can't get to the very tip of this thing. Right. And what I do is I just take this and kind of like flatten, flatten it out in my hand and lay that on there. And again, if you don't have the jerky gun, that's fine. You're just going to do the same thing. Just take it and you're going to make it like that thickness. Yeah. Okay. Nice. This made a respectable amount. So this is the amount of beef jerky that we got. You actually get more beef jerky doing it this way than you do with using top round or something. And again, this is cheap. We use grass fed, grass finished. We paid $5 a pound for that as opposed to the top sirloin that I got on sale for $10.99 a pound. And honestly, I like this one better. And so again, as we go to put this in here, you're going to see you got a pound here. And a pound here. Or a pound here. So either way, they're going to have the same flavors. It just depends on which way you like to eat it. Yeah. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to put it into the dehydrator. I'm going to move this other rack and keep them separate. Now with this particular dehydrator, we don't have to rotate shelves. Some dehydrators, you actually have to rotate the shelves. Okay. Same thing, 155 to 160 degrees. Only with this particular one, you're only going to have to go for about three hours because obviously it's ground beef. It doesn't have to go through as thickness of meat. So we got that on. We've got it set for 155 degrees. 
It's on five hours because that's about what we're gonna need for the regular beef jerky, but we're gonna come in and check it every hour or so. Now with the ground beef version, I do like to come in in about an hour and just loosen it because when you're pressing it with the jerky gun, sometimes it sticks to like the little mesh pieces. So I just wanna kind of loosen it up a little bit so that we don't have to try to peel it and pry it off later on. I have to say, I have a really hard time letting it cook all, like the length <laughs> that Joe wants it because when it gets soft, I mean, it's cooked all the way through, right. but it has such a nice soft consistency that I really love it. Okay, we'll be back in a little while. Okay, so we're back through the magic of television in 10 minutes, but it's supposed to be five hours. Right. <laughs> But we made a batch ahead of time. We made a batch ahead of time to kind of cut down on editing this video. This is what we have. So this is what it's gonna look like for the actual normal beef jerky. And you can look in here, I'm gonna show it in this camera. Look at the little pieces of red pepper flakes. That's why I love this so much. And then the same thing with this. Well, you can show it. Same thing here. This is what it's gonna look like. Look at those little pieces of red pepper in there. This one's a little bit darker, obviously. I like this one. Why do you like it so much? Because it's delicious. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna try them both. Obviously, like we said, you get a lot more in this kind than you do in this. This is a little bit chewier. This like one's a little bit more economical. Yeah. Which one are we gonna try first? Let's try this one first. You're gonna try, this is my favorite, personally. I like this one. Because it's traditional? I just like the chewiness. I like that it'll take me a long time. I can eat three times as many of those as I can with this. True story. Mmm. It's got the you can right see how it's amount that chewiness. of sweetness. Sweet. It's like a, just a touch of spiciness if and then like, sweet, but not spiciness like burn your face off spiciness. It reminds me of, we had gotten like a Korean barbecue flavor. Yep. Tastes like that. It's exactly what it tastes like. Now, again, I wasn't going for that. I kind of just threw spices together until it gave me the flavor I like. And the final add-in was just that little drop of Worcestershire sauce. I felt like it kind of threw it through the roof as far as flavor-wise. Mm-hmm. It's delicious. That is really good. You guys are gonna really like this one. On to this one. My fave. Here's how you're gonna know it's done because we're telling you time, but part of dehydrating beef is just kind of knowing it's done. So with this, you're looking for it to bend but not break. You don't want it to, to break in pieces and be super brittle. You want it to be that chewiness. Same thing with this. What you want to do is when you first, obviously when it's sitting, it's a little bit different, but when you first take it out, you want to be able to bend this and not have it just immediately snap in half. It should be pliable. So dry but pliable. And the only way you really know is by experience. You'll be like, yep, that looks good. Okay? Just try it. Ready? Happy dance. Can we do a, a David Venable happy dance? Happy dance. Happy dance, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, David. That was good. It's delicious. Same delicious flavor. I love the sweetness, but the mouthfeel is really nice and interesting. Just softer. Mm-hmm. Again, great thing, you're waiting for dinner, right? You're cooking dinner. I want a little something. Have yes. one piece of this. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe like 10, 20 minutes before dinner, as your after dinner snack, you want yeah. a little bit of a sweetness. This is where you're gonna go. Meat and again, candy. you can adjust your spices, things like that. Mm -hmm. So let's go over the nutrition. Now the nutrition on this is a little bit difficult. Not so much with this one, but with this one. Right. So we're gonna start with this. So we used a pound of ground beef. Mm -hmm. We ended up with about 31 pieces. Which I think is respectable. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna divide this into 16 servings. So basically, two of these pieces. Yeah. So you figure when you started off with was an ounce of ground beef per serving. Right. Okay. So two of these pieces, just divide it up. See how much you have, divide it up. That's how you're going to go. It's going to be 59 calories if you cut it into 16 servings. Three and a half grams of fat, 5.6 grams of protein, 0.8 total carbs 
per serving. Such a better snack option. Now remember, all of those carbs, you're gonna see a lot of beef jerkies, they're gonna say zero carbs. They're not really zero carbs unless there's absolutely no spice, no seasoning in there. This is like a sweet and savory, almost like a teriyaki. The coconut aminos are going to bring in the carbs. You can cut down on the coconut aminos if you want a little bit. Nuh-uh. You can cut down on the garlic a little bit. You can cut down on the pepper. All of that does bring in carbs. But you're basically looking at, if you eat this entire batch in one sitting, it's less than 14 total carbs. And that would be eating a pound of ground beef, beef jerky in a sitting you'd be looking at less than 14 total carbs. I love it. Okay, now this one gets a little bit more difficult for your nutrition. Now, and for both of them, by the way, it is going to depend on what type of beef you use. We used 85-15, that's gonna up the fat, lower the protein a little bit, as mm -hmm. opposed to if you get a 90-10 or a 93-7, right. that's gonna be lower in fat, lower in calories, and a little bit higher in protein. So it all depends on what you find. So we use top sirloin. Mm -hmm. The top sirloin, again, we broke this into four pound, 16 servings. You, the only thing you can do is really measure out and decide how many servings do I want to get out of Weigh that. It. But based on 16 servings, we're looking at 50 calories per serving, 1.3 grams of fat, 6.3 grams of protein. Now the carbs are the hard part to figure out. If you used every single bit of juice, it would be 2.2 total carbs per serving. However, you're not using all those juices, you're marinating it in the juice. So what you're gonna do, if you really want to know exactly how many carbs you have, measure out how much liquid you have. So let's say you have a cup of liquid to start with. After you're done marinating, how much you, you can, over. and what I like to do is I would take the ground, take your beef and squeeze the juices out of it because they're already in there. You don't need the extra water. It's just gonna dehydrate I was gonna say you're anyway. dehydrating, so you're helping the process. Right. So what you'll do, now measure what's left over after you've put the beef in there and subtract it. It works out to be about the same. You're gonna have less than one total carb per serving because I end up with about 50 to 60% of the liquid left over after I put it into the dehydrator. So, Does that make sense? Yeah, and it just all depends on what you know style you want. You're probably in the same ballpark. It's just like what kind of mouth flavor yeah. do you want? Nutritionally, they're both about the same. They mouth both have feel. about the same carbs. And again, you can cut it down with not using so much you know, coconut aminos, things like that. Well, that is our video for today. Let us know down in the comment section if you've ever had keto beef jerky. Which one do you like? Which way would you like it better? Would you prefer the ground beef or would you prefer the regular traditional beef piece? Team ground beef. I like this one. Although I like them both, this is my preferred way to eat it. So that is our video for today. Please do us a favor, hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time.